incorporates really like both of the ideas that, that I said to you. If we are multiplying some expressions together, or some, some functions together, then we might hope that if we write them as fractions, fractions using sine and cosine exclusively, then maybe something will cancel out, maybe the numerator will cancel the denominator, right? So first, we're gonna write everything there, at least right here, as a fraction involving sine or cosine, and only sine and cosine. So let's we'll start with cosecant. Cosecant's relationship to the sine and cosine. One over the sine. Times the sine over one. There's no uh, thought needed there. It's just already sine. And then the sines cancel each other out. Sine divided by sine, so that's one. So I said this incorporated both of the ideas. One of them is when you're multiplying or dividing. Let's rewrite everything in terms of sine and cosine as fractions. And do whatever. See if anything cancels out. So that worked out. We got one plus cotangent squared. And whenever you see like one or, or two, like a number plus or minus some function squared, think Pythagorean identity. So you look in the front, first page of this section. What? This is, uh, yeah, this is the same as the cosecant squared. Right? You look right there in that little box in the blue uh, header, and you see sine squared plus cosine squared equals one, one plus tangent squared equals secant squared, and one plus cotangent squared equals cosecant squared. So just replace it with cosecant squared. They're equivalent to each other, so we can use either one. So uh, if it asks us to simplify, so it would be simpler if we use the cosecant squared instead of taking a cotangent squared and, that, and then adding one slightly. Another question? Yeah. Number 30. thing if you uh, if you caught it when I said in class or if you watched the video I explained this as well that uh, this isn't so much an equation that we would do things to both sides that would be an equation you know is true right when we start off an equation something equals something else we know it's true we're trying to prove these are equal to each other so to do things to both sides like add one to both sides divide by two or whatever on both sides would be to assume that they're equal saying I know that they're equal we're trying to show that they're equal. So we're just going to change the way each side looks. We're going to use, you know, basically simplify each side, or one side, whatever, uh, one or both of them, until they both look identical to each other. Okay, so we change it around until they both look identical to each other. So we're going to start somewhere, either on the right side or the left side, try to make some kind of a, a swap out uh, and see if we can get one side to look like the other. There's not any multiplication or division, so there's not any hope of some stuff canceling out when you multiply two fractions together. So probably just look at those like Pythagorean identities, make some kind of substitution, any kind of substitution, and see what happens. Cosine squared, okay, equals one. equals one. So, where could we make that substitution? Uh, first place. I did okay. <laughs> I'm ready. I did like two minus sine squared. Oh. 
Sine squared plus cosine squared equals one. Okay. Now, I don't see any sine squared plus cosine squared, sine squared plus cosine squared that I could just replace with one. Um, but what if I like got sine squared by itself? What would sine squared be the same as? It would be the same as one minus cosine squared. So I use this identity, which I know is true. I know sine squared plus cosine squared is definitely equal to one. So I can do stuff to both sides if I want to. So subtract cosine squared from both sides. What I've done is figured out what is the same as sine squared. What could I replace sine squared with? I could replace it with one minus cosine squared. Let's try that. Minus cosine squared, one plus one minus cosine squared theta. Just replace the sine squared with one minus cosine squared. So minus cosine squared on this side. One plus one is two. One minus cosine squared. That, that worked out. Or start with sine squared plus cosine squared. And let's see if we can replace uh, this cosine squared. Instead of sine squared, let's replace cosine squared. We've got cosine squared equals uh, 1 minus sine squared. So I'll just go back here. I'll plug 1 minus sine squared in for cosine squared, but I'll make sure there's a, a negative out front. 2 minus 1 minus sine squared. So this side is the same. Nothing the negative 2 minus 1, negative times negative is positive, sine squared. 2 minus 1 is 1, sine squared theta. said, I'll start with sine squared theta plus cosine squared theta equals 1. You should mess around with that until that looked like that guy over there. So what did you do first? Did you subtract? Um, yeah, I got cosine squared theta plus cosine squared equals sine squared. So you subtract cosine squared on both sides. Sine squared theta equals 1 minus Add one, add one. You can do anything you want to both sides, right? So add one to both sides. The other side will be one plus sine squared. That's the right side. Equals just one plus one is two. Let's go so. so by starting with something we know is true, we mess around with it a little bit until that looks like the thing we we're trying to prove is equal. So that's proof as well that they must be equal to each other. What's the question, Jennifer? Like, what's the answer then? The answer is like the process like that. that you went through. Okay, so you don't have like a set one thing? No. Okay. This is a correct answer. This is a correct answer. This is a correct answer. It's the work itself okay. that is the answer. Other questions?
function. Um, okay. so we could go right to the graph and say, what, is, what kind of change does it go through? What can we account for right away? Uh, down, down one. is always positive. Well, it's positive so two, but it flips over. So it flips over, okay. So we'll just remind ourselves. Oops. Uh, vertically. Okay. So the left part of the I'm going to leave the shift until the very last, after the period change. <laughs> Otherwise, it can get kind of weird and messed up. Um, this is at one, this is at negative three. So we did two of those things. We're going to move the shift to the very last, so we just got to figure out what the period is. Period equals. How do we figure it out? 2 pi over 1 half. That's 2 pi over 1 times 2 over 1 multiplied by the reciprocal there. We got 4 pi is the period. So we'll mark off the period of 4 pi. That's 4 pi. So this is 2 pi. So this is 1 pi. 3 pi. That's pretty convenient for us. All right, and now we shift to the left. Left pi over 2. should know that there, like so these are some key positions here that we're going to shift all of those that I've marked off in black. We're going to shift them to the left pi over two, right? So this one right here, we're going to shift this to the left pi over two. Over that, put it. Okay, we'll start at zero. We shift to the left pi over two. Negative pi over two. Shift to the left pi over two. Oh. So here's negative pi. Here's negative pi over two. Okay, what about pi? We shift a point on pi to the left pi over 2, whatever that be. Subtract. So pi minus pi over 2, that's 2 pi over 2 minus pi over 2. That's just pi over 2, right? That's pi over 2 right there. How about from 2 pi? It shifts it to the left pi over 2. What's that? 3 pi over 2. 2 pi minus pi over 2. That's 4 pi over 2, 3 pi over 2. And that's right there, 3 pi over 2. This guy here, 3 pi over inches to the left, pi over 2, where's that going to be? 5 pi over 2. And this guy will shift back to 7 pi over 2. 9. It would be 9 pi over 2. That one we won't even need though, because we've got the one, two, three, four, five key uh, positions. All right, so this is a cosine wave, all right? But uh, as Dakota pointed out, it flips, okay? Normally a cosine wave would start uh, at the top, and we'd have the bottom back to the top, and the max out of the minimum back to the maximum. But it's flipped over, so instead, it's gonna be like that. Flipped over vertically. So here we go. Here is its midline. There's its midline right there that we shifted down one. So we'll start at the minimum. Go up to the midline at pi over two. Up to the maximum at three pi over two. The midline at five pi over two. And the minimum at seven pi over two. Shift to the very end.
simplify this as much as possible. Uh, we see a lot of multiplication and division. When we see a lot of multiplication and division, we know some things will cancel out if we write them in terms of sine and cosine, right? So how about the sine that's already in terms of sine? I have a question. Yes. On the test, are the formulas of those things going to be on them? Mm -hmm. okay. Except for these ones, like cosecant and secant, no, but the Pythagorean ones, yes. Okay. One over um, the sine. Sine. It kind of seems like it would be cosine and cosecant would be what they're not. So it's kind of a bummer. All right. Sines cancel, so that's one. Plus. Still, a bunch of multiplication and division, so we're hoping fractions will cancel out if we write them down. So this is just cosine squared over one. How about the tangent? Sine squared over cosine squared. Cosecant. Over the sine. Everything's canceling out there. We got a one up in the numerator. And the denominator secant is one over cosine squared. Sine is sine. If we multiply these together, we'll get sine over cosine. This sine over cosine. Tangent. Tangent. What's one over the tangent squared called? Oh, the cotangent. The cotangent. Oh, so close. And I forgot to put these up here. So if you got there, you did great. Uh, since I didn't have those written up there, that next part isn't. Yeah, I was like so. Which one is it? One plus cotangent squared. Cosecant squared. If we get to here, that's fine. If you didn't get there, I should have put the identities up on the board for you. I didn't, so uh, either one of these are good. This one's extra good. So if you put a smiley face, make sure it has like teeth or something. Big teeth. <laughs> <laughs> in a sinusoidal equation, it might bring a Bell a little bit sinusoidal, right? Like sine wave. Okay. So a sinusoidal equation is one or a formula is one a formula function. It's just one that involves the sine or the cosine. You can use the sine or you can use the cosine to write an equation to model something. Okay. So uh, it says, as the tides change, the water level in a bay varies sinusoidally. Okay. So in that way. Right, because high tide, low tide, high tide, low tide, high tide, low tide, throughout different parts of the day. Okay. So at high tide today, let's let me just cross out what we're not going to answer. Um, that part, that's a, the calculus part. The rest of it is an algebra two thing. So at high tide today, at 8 a.m., the water level was 15 feet. So high tide means it's the the highest water level that you'll see. Okay, so high tide at 8 a.m. was 15 feet. 8 a.m. is 15 feet. We can look at this uh, graph if we want. We put 8 is at 15 feet. Uh, at low tide, so that would be you know goes from high tide and then it kind of recedes and at low tide at uh, 2 o'clock, 2 o'clock, the tide was 3 feet. 2 o'clock, so let's see. So 2 would be right about there. It's 3 feet, so right about there. Big change. So it's a high tide. It changes, it says sinusoidally, so it follows a a sine wave or cosine wave, depending on uh, really which one you want to choose, because you have a choice here uh, in this, this stuff, in this function writing. So we have taken a, a, a function and graphed it, taken into account of periods, amplitude, and all that stuff, shift, period change. Now we're going to go the other way. We're going to be giving some information about the graph, the function itself, or some inputs and outputs, and they're going to write the equation. Okay, kind of like 
way back in the day when we were given a slope and a point and we wrote the linear equation. Right? Now we're going to write a sinusoidal equation. And it looks like a lot, but it's, it actually just breaks down into this, as simply as it did when you were graphing. We just need to figure out all of these numbers that need to go in here. Right? So it's going to look like this. Y equals, you know, we have A, right? That's, that affects our amplitude. And we're going to choose sine or cosine. We'll decide. Either one can be right. It's just like the rest of it needs to work along with it. Um, we're going to have the sine and the cosine, depending on which one we choose, of B. That's going to affect our period times X minus H. That's going to be our horizontal shift. And there's going to be our vertical shift. We're going to write an equation that models that scenario, and then we could use it to answer lots of different questions. What was the tide at such and such a time? Or in calculus, how fast in feet per hour was the water level dropping at exactly 12 o'clock? Okay. We can answer all sorts of questions once we have this equation written. So you know what each of these things stands for, what it, what, you know, it affect, how it affects the graph. So, Take a look at the graph, take a look at these points. You tell me, what can you tell me about this function or this graph? Can you tell me about, you know, immediately does it pop out to you what the period is? Does it pop out to you what the amplitude is, what the horizontal shift is? Take a look, what do you think? The amplitude is 6. How did you do that? Okay, so. Well, the midline would be like in the middle, then it's 6. Okay, so you found the amplitude. For sure. You took uh, 15 minus 3. Right? 15 minus 3 should give you this distance here. Right. So to find A, right? We'll, we'll just let this be A. You took 15 minus 3. That's not it, but you took 15 minus 3, you got 12, and you took that to divide it by 2. The amplitude is, you know, one way to look at it is halfway between. You know, what is the half the distance from here to there? So take 15 minus 3, that's going to give us 12, you divide that by 2, 6. It's 6 from the midline up to the very top. It's also 6 from the midline down to the bottom. So we found amplitude six. So we got that. That's taken care of. When you figure out the amplitude, you could probably figure out the midline, right? That's pretty closely related. Nine. Nine. Yeah. Well, I guess if we know the amplitude is six, we know it's from. Here to here is three, and from here to the midline is six. That must be nine. If you can look at it, you can say, oh, that makes sense. Or um, you can say that if you're going to give me a maximum value there, a minimum value, then that midline is really the right in the middle of those two y values, right? Right in the middle of those two. That's like the average. We're finding the average between the maximum and the minimum. How do you find averages? Uh, <coughs> add the numbers and then divide by how many you have. Yep. So we've got five, 15 plus 3. That's only two numbers. So 15 plus 3 divided by 2, that's going to give us the average. It's going to give us the midline. So that'd be k is equal to, let's call it the maximum. That's a big M. Plus the minimum. That's little m. This will work every time. Even if they're negative or whatever. You add them together and divide by two, you're always finding the average. You will always find the, the value right halfway between two numbers when you do that. Okay. So 15 plus 3, 2, 18, 2, 9. In a similar way. Anytime we want to find A, we can take big M minus little m. The maximum, the biggest value, minus the minimum, the smallest value, divided by 2, just like Amy explained. So now we know what k is. It's 9. <coughs> now, um, let's not worry.
worry about whether it's sine or cosine, like which one you want to do. Let's think about, can we find the period or the horizontal shift? Which one can we find? Find the period, what's the period? 12 hours, why do you say 12 hours? Because uh, the first half of the period Very good, that's half hours, of the period. So to recognize, if they give you a maximum and then the following minimum, or you know, the minimum and then the maximum, well that must go for half of a period, from the top down to the bottom. If we go from the bottom up to the top, then we'll go on through a full period, which will always be twice as far as what, what's given if they give you a maximum and a minimum. Yeah. So the period is 12, okay. Does that mean 12 just gets stuck in there somewhere? Uh, no. No, because that's not how it works. How do we find the period? 2 pi over 2 pi over 2 pi. Pi. So 12 is the period. Yeah. So B is whatever it takes to make this 12. Yeah. Right, so we solve for B. How do we multiply by B on both sides? Yeah. Cancel. Multiply by B here. So you got 12B equals 2 pi. Right, divide by 2 pi. Right. Right, we solve for B. Divide by 12. B equals pi over 6. And there we go. B equals pi over 6. All right. Here's the nice part. This last part. Two things left, right? What two things are we already left with? Horizontal shift and... Yeah, sine or cosine, we haven't decided which one would be. Think about sine or cosine. What does this look like to you, sine or cosine? Cosine. Looks like cosine, because cosine starts out here, down, and back up. Right? Down and back up. So it looks like a cosine wave that shifted over. Yeah? So, looks like a cosine wave that shifted over. How far did it shift over? If, it's, if this guy started out over here, normally it would start right on the y-axis and then and we'll go down like that. But it shifted over how much? Where is it right now? Where is that point right now? It's at H. Oh, so if we kind of assume it was a cosine wave that shifted over right some amount, it shifted over to the right 8. 8 hours. Shifted to the right 8 hours. So, what does that tell us about our equation? We just talked about a horizontal shift, right? Oh, the H is eight. H is eight. Yeah. H is eight. It's shifted to the right eight. Anybody decide to use the sine or the cosine? Cosine. cosine. Looks like a cosine wave got shifted over. Now, so that we could use a sine wave, we could. Uh, Look at this point, it's, it's nice uh, to look at the point that, that would have started out on the y-axis and then just shift it over that much. But to use a sine, we've got to figure out either like where is this, or go back and figure out where does this cross the midline, shift that to the right. But if we use a cosine, we can just take that guy right there. That's how far it shifted over. So. decided to use the cosine. B was pi over 6. And x minus h was 8. We considered it a cosine wave that shifted to the right 8. Plus k, which we decided was 9. Now, if you decided to use the sine, then the horizontal shift would be different. So there's one possible different equation that you could have written. Um, you, 
what I'm getting to here is there's, there is an infinite number of possibilities here. We could write an infinite number of equations that would make this sinusoidal wave. Um, there's, there's just a few that make the most sense that are probably the easiest to come by. But in the end, any number of answers could be correct. So it's up to you. But I think this one is probably the easiest one. We know that the amplitude and the k, no matter what the equation is, those are going to be the same. right? Except for maybe we have negative 6 instead of positive 6. If you wanted to, I don't know, be kind of creative. Then it comes down to, well, the period, of course, the, the, the b is always going to be the same, because no matter what the equation looks like, we still have a period of 12 in this case. And then we just have to decide, should we use sine, cosine? What would the horizontal shape be then? I'm going to leave this up here. Let me check out the work. And um, if you Yeah, we started with just two points, 8, 50, 8 comma 15 and 2 comma 3. It's pretty helpful to visualize it with a graph, so I would suggest go ahead and do that. And just figure out all those different pieces, which you saw how we easily came up with the amplitude and the, the vertical shift. So uh, for that, the period was pretty simple. Find the period, you can find out the between sine and cosine, you get the amplitude there. The B, which is going to be related to a period, X minus H, so that's going to be a horizontal shift, that's K, vertical shift. Let's quickly sketch this out. So here's pi over 3, and 5 pi over 3, 2, 3, 4, 5, pi over 3. So fire away, what, what things do we know? Period, or amplitude. Okay, amplitude, how big is the amplitude? Three. It's three, how did you figure that out? Uh, there's uh, A equals 13 minus 3 over 3. 13 minus 7 divided by 2. There you go, easy pi. Uh, 13 minus 7 is 6, which is 3, so there we go. Part 1. Let's figure something else out. What else can we know? Uh, K is 10. Or, yeah, okay, go ahead. Sorry. K is 10. K is 10. How do we figure that out? Uh, add M, the maximum and the minimum. All right, there we Divide go. Divide by 2. Uh, 2 that's 20 over 2, that's 10. That's K. And then uh, we can do some H. Do some H? Yeah. Find H. Okay, find uh, H. H is what? Um, four. What? I don't know. Oh yeah, four pi over three. Four pi over three? Two pi over three. Two pi over three. <laughs> oh gosh. Hmm. I guess we kind of have to decide. What is, are we looking at a sine wave or are we looking at a cosine wave? Sine. You showed us the sine. Okay, so uh, then you need to find this place right here. We know this is uh, 10. So you looked at, at this point right here because the sign starts here, goes up and then down and up. Yeah. Is that how you, like what your rationale was? Oh, yeah. So this should be halfway between these two, right? Yeah. What's halfway between pi over 3 and pi pi over 3? Huh? Pi over 3. Pi over 3. 
here's pi over 3. If each of these marks is worth pi over 3, this is 2 pi over 3. So 3 pi over 3 would be this, which is pi. Okay, maybe we're not sure. I don't. I can't remember what's right in the middle of those two. So I want to find, just like we found the midline, I want to find the average between these two. So just take 5 pi over 3 plus pi over 3. So that's 6 pi over 3 times 1 half. So that's 3 pi over 3 plus pi. So pi, we've chosen to use the sign. Apparently. That's what Dakota wanted to do, so that makes sense. So we've got A. We've got, we're using the sign. We've got the horizontal shift. We've got the vertical shift. Last thing is B. Now we find B. For us to find B, we have to find what? P. P period? Mickey, what'd you find the period to be? Oh. Not yet. Didn't find it yet? Okay. Did you have B yet? I did the period instead of H. What's that? 2 pi over 3 is the period? Yeah. Okay, how'd you find that? Uh, I don't know. Well, full period would be where we trace out one full cycle, one full repeating shape. Um, that'd be here. Um, well, we're halfway there. 10 pi over 3? Not quite. That would be if this went from 0 to 5 pi over 3, and then oh. double would be 10 pi 7 over 3. 7 pi over 3. 8 pi over 3. Nine. Should be a multiple of 2, right? Yeah. <laughs> if it's twice as big as the period or the, the distance we see here? Yeah. Okay. So let's see how far it is from here to there. That would be 5 pi over 3 minus pi over 3. That would be from here to there. That's the distance from here to there. Is that the period? No. How big is the period compared to this? Two times the period. Two times that. So two times that, that's two times four pi over three. That's eight pi over three. Yeah. So that's P. How does that help us out? What does that help us find? That is a period. It helps us find B. Remember, if we take period is equal to 2 pi over B, let's just make a new equation that always is going to solve for B rather than plugging in and then multiplying that B on both sides. 2 pi. P times B oh, equals 2 pi. Then we get B by itself. Divide by P. B equals 2 pi over P. B equals 2 pi over 8 pi over 3. B equals 2 pi over 1 times 3 over 8 pi. Let's do it that way. Uh, 2 cancels with 8. 4 and 1. B equals 3. Oh, pi cancels with pi as well. 3 4. Y equals A is 3. The sine wave like that, starting out there, going down like this, coming back up. Times the sine of B, which we just found out is 3 fourths. X minus H. Plus K. up here so you can follow along if you like. Here's another example of
mind we're writing this kind of an equation? Then uh, it should be too bad. Let's think about finding A. Uh, 15 minus 15 3 minus 3? Yes. Yeah. Divide by 2. Oh, yeah. so 6. 15 minus 3. Plus minus, minus negative three. three. Minus negative three. Minus. And then divide by two. That's eighteen. Divide by two. That's nine. Because negatives cancel. Uh, okay. M minus M. Okay. Oh. But if M is negative, or one of them is negative, then it's gotta be negative. You gotta, you gotta subtract the negative. How about K? Fifteen plus minus three divided by two. Minus three divided by two. So this is gonna give you the total uh the midline. Yeah. It's going to give the average between these two, the midline. Um, so this is 12 by the 2 is 6. Oh, I for that. Okay. How about let's find uh, P. Let me use that to find B. So it was, what's the period? 11. 11? Well, 11 minus 7. 11 minus 7 times 2. From 7 to 11 is uh, 6. No, four. Is, uh, four, excuse me, is four times two is eight. So that's the period, but we don't care really about the period. Two pi over eight. Pi B. So two pi over eight. over eight gives us B. Pi over four. Pi over four. Find lots of good stuff here. Um, maybe we should uh, draw or imagine this thing real quick. Uh, here we say seven, comma fifteen, and eleven. So now we're going to decide uh, what the horizontal shift and what what function we're going to use. You're going to use the sine or the cosine or what? So you say sine, cosine, 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 because uh, as opposed to this one, where it goes like this, maybe it's more natural to use the sine. It's right in the middle. That's how the sine looks. This looks like a cosine wave. Looks like it goes like this and back up and down like that. So it'd be easy to imagine that. This part that started at the y-axis has shifted over how much? So h is 7. And we're using the cosine. y equals 9 times the cosine of uh, pi over 4 times x minus 7 plus Let's do like a real life thing. So just look this up on the internet. Looked up the sunrise times at different times of year. So I looked up the highest, like the, not the highest, the uh, the latest that the sun rises, and the day that is the earliest that the sun rises. Okay. So we're gonna have to transform this into like some data points that we can graph, and then uh, come up with an equation. So, you see on January 9th, well, I should have, oh, I guess this is backwards. 2014, 2015. So, uh, given these two things, this piece of data, then we're, we'll make an equation that predicts for any day. Okay. So on June 16th, it rises at 541. That's the earliest time that I could find. On uh, January 9th of next year, it should rise at 8.20. Okay, how are they doing this? How are they predicting this? It's a little bit of an equation, a lot like what we're about to write. Okay, yeah. uh, using past data, they write an equation that predicts future data. Cool. So June 16th, 2014, first of all, we need to make this into a data point. I'm going to probably turn, let's say, the hours into like decimal form somehow. Okay. It's not like 5.41, right? What is it? 
Yeah. 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 Good. So we got five point. What'd you say to get six? Six eight three. Six eight three. So let's go with five point six eight hours after midnight. The sun should rise on that date. Okay. How about June sixteenth? We want to be kind of uh, precise. Right, so we don't want to just say like six, right? Because June is the sixth month. Um, six point five. Six point five. It's about halfway through. You should do sixteen out of thirty days. Can we go a little more? Like, is it 16.5 something? 16 is not right at the middle, right? Um, so 14 out of, June has 30 days. 16 out of 30 6.65. Okay, nice guessing, but maybe we can use these newfangled calculators. How about 5.3? 6.53. I'm going to say 5.5. 5. Okay, 6.5 would be June 15th. So June 16th is a little bit more. There's a data point. Is that a maximum or a minimum? Mm, it's maximum or minimum. Maximum. minimum. It's the minimum. Right? Yeah. The y value is small. They get the earliest time that the sun rises. Oh, yeah. Okay. We got a 6.35, comma, 5.68. If we convert these into decimal, we can convert them from decimal back into, you know, something that makes a little more sense. Figuring out how many days are in a given month and you know uh, how many minutes are, are given by 0.68 hours. How about this one? How about 820? When is that like as a decimal? What would 820 be? Twenty minutes is a third of an hour exactly, right? So point three 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 forever. And how about uh, Ju January now? January. Oh, what in the world is wrong with me? That's six point five three. No, that's June. January. Okay. Point three three. Nine is point three. How many days does January have? Thirty one. Thirty one. Take nine divided by thirty one. Mm -hmm. Right. You get what? Okay, point two nine three. Yeah, I don't know. That was pretty close. Should this be should this be zero or one? one. Zero. Yeah. Uh, well, I guess we have to decide here. This is June, and a little bit more into June. Right? June has begun, and we're a little bit into oh, June. Oh, so yeah, one. One. We're into January, and we're a little bit into January. Right? Yeah. January and some more. June and a little more. You, you have to decide. You, you could have this be 0 0.29, but then this would have to be 5.53. It seems a little more natural to me that June starts at 6, and then if you have more than 6, it's into January. Or June, sorry. Okay, so in uh, January, which in this case is, uh, well, let's just pretend this says 14. It's going to make our lives easier. 1.29 and 8.33. So we see the time that the, the sun comes up is late in the day and dropping down to earlier in the day. And then you know, about another six months passes by and we will come back up here. Equation y equals a times sine or cosine. We decide b times x minus h plus k. A k p for b times h. So let's find.
YouTube? Let's just use two decimal places because that those, those had two decimal places. Okay. One point three three. Everybody get one point three three? Okay, good. So that's that's A. How about K? Seven point zero one. Seven point zero one. And then the eight point three three plus five point six. Seven point zero one. That would be like how would that translate into like real life? What what is this value telling us about the sun? Day, average length, it's going to come up around seven. How much should the period be? Think about it. It's a full year. That's half a year. What would a full cycle be? Oh, a full year. A full year. How many months? Twelve. Twelve months. What does it come out? Let's make it be 12, because we know that it has to be 12. What does it come out to be if we just take the difference and tell it? 10.12. Whoa. That's a little weird. We probably would get a better equation if we would have done the equator, right? But we live in a place where, like, our winters are a little longer than most people's, right? It's fine. We're just going to use this, OK? Uh, so the period is 12, so b equals 2 pi over 12, pi over 6. What's h? 1.29. We've got ourselves an equation. y equals a times, what do we use, the cosine or the sine? Cosine. Cosine is usually what we use. Pi over 6 times x minus 1.29 plus If we plug in x like uh, x is 3.2, that'll be, when will 3.2 be? What month will this be? March. 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 And a little bit more. How much more? 0.2. Uh, how eight. many days? Eight. What? Eight. Yeah, it has 31 days. So 0.2 times 31. Eight. 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 Six point two. Eight. So this is like uh, March sixth. Point two. Uh, so March sixth. So if we plug that in there, we'll be saying March sixth, and when we calculate all this out, we do all the the math. It'll tell us about what time of day the sun should rise on March sixth. Any 